how you should start it. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, it's Jeffrey with Real Nifty Vintage, and today Barb is back for another tantalizing, is that the word? Tantalizing. <laughs> I guess it is now. <laughs> it is. We have a wonderful haul video today of auction things that we bought from an online auction. If you did not watch the previous video to this one, it is of me basically sitting there and recording me bidding on these auction things. But before I jump right on into this haul video, I wanna show you the very final moments of me bidding on this online auction. All right, so we currently have two minutes and two seconds remaining on these flow blue plates and I'm gonna put my bid in right now. My top dollar amount I want to do for these is $120. So I will put it in for, let's do 105 um, and see what happens with that. Oh, it looks like we have to do 110 because of the darn bid increments. Okay, 110, which means we'll have 126.50 for those. And I am currently the high bidder. Six minutes left. Oh no, I didn't know it was gonna have a soft close. <gasps> oh my gosh, that's kind of annoying. They did not mention anything about a soft close. All right, and just like that, I am outbid again. So it was extended at like the last minute for somebody else. It's at $120 at this point. And I think I just have to walk away from them. All right, here is the paperweights that I gave up on pretty early in the bidding process. So they sold for $25 plus a 15% buyer's premium. Well, I'm on to the next item. This is a tall Murano art glass vase, and it ends in about 18 minutes. I'm learning from my first mistake, and I'm not bidding at the last couple of minutes. I'm gonna put my max bid in right now and just let it be. I was originally gonna do $45, but I think I'm going to go a little higher than that. So the current bid is $35. I will go ahead and put in my bid at $45, but it's going to have that buyer's premium on top. All right, and just like that, I have been outbid, which is quite all right because there wasn't going to be a lot of profit in this base necessarily. So it is currently at $55 past my 50. So I have decided that since I I'm not able to sit here and babysit all of these listings and it's not even in my best interest to bid 10 minutes or however many minutes before it ends. I might as well go ahead and set my absolute max bids and just let it be. Now this was something that I was not actually planning on bidding again on, but I haven't bought anything yet. So I will go ahead and do that and it's lightweight and small, so I am willing to go a little higher on this one, we will set a max bid of, you know what, $65. Quite a lot, I know. You've got this one right here. You know what? I'm We're going to leave it at 55 Maybe we can get a deal on that one. This one I wasn't going to do before, but I think we will take a look at it again. So I am going to go ahead and put in for, oh, we're going to try $40. This one is the one I'm going to step up my game tremendously. Now we are really premature here at two hours and 22 minutes. So we need to put in my best and final, and I'm not going to turn back after this. It's just, it is what it is, whatever happens. In 150 and hope for the best that it does not actually have to go that high. It's crazy. Look at this, but look at that buyer's premium. 172.50 for this, okay? And then the last thing was this Nippon base. I originally said in the last video that $20 was my max. We are still three hours away from this, you know, for this finalizing. It has me so much worried. So what do I do? My max bid will be $25. All right, so as you can see, a few things were up in the air, a few things I actually missed out on completely. And I do want to say, before I get into this haul video even more, I did have a couple questions on today's haul video. I don't know if you watched, saw them, the different questions of like why I bid on certain things. I didn't get to see the comments yet. Well, you know, they're, the questions are valid and I don't know if I can accurately answer it. It was basically about, uh, you know, don't I have like a formula in my head already of what I'm willing to bid on something to ensure that there's a profit and why was I, I was basically making it harder than it needed to be, I guess, in some cases. And why wasn't I bidding 
Like, why was I turning some things down, but other... So there was I'm, like this. I mean, I would say, wouldn't that partly be due to like your Emotion. emotional, yeah. yeah, like how invested you are in an item? And now it's one thing if you're letting that take over and you're paying more for it than like it can sell for, you know. Yeah, but right. if you're still gonna make a profit and you're just you just kind of want to get your hands on this item that you've never had, you know, you don't have to make. It's not always rational. And I think are logical. So there's the logical side of the brain and the emotional side of the brain. And I think with this business, you pretty much need to use both, but it's best to be more logical than others sometimes, especially when doing price research. And so if you have not watched that video, it shows in depth how I do price research ahead of the time before we bid on things multi many times we get to, we bid on things impulsively as we're at auctions based on what we know on certain items but in these cases especially for me they're of things that i uh they're rare for the most part a lot of these are and you don't really see them often and so the margins are going to be less because i don't know i don't want to talk too much but <laughs> um do you want to silence that <laughs> what was it your phone oh i didn't even realize that was mine yeah <sighs> it would um distract me over and over again otherwise they are very distractible. <laughs> I think I have some disease. I don't have a disease, but a disorder. <laughs> oh, poopy do, Stella. So, what am I saying? Uh, okay, so Barb was actually... No. What? What? <laughs> um, so Barb actually auditioned. That's not what... <laughs> <laughs> oh, once I get out of the zone, it's so easy to like not be in it again. So Barb also purchased something from this auction in addition to what I got. That made no sense. <laughs> okay. So Barb also bought something from the auction and she's going to go ahead and show you that first and then I will continue with the things that I ended up getting. So take it away with what you've got. Okay. So I guess I can first say that I only had two like lots in this auction that I was considering bidding on. And I did bid on both of them, but I only won one of them. So it just, I wasn't, <laughs> you were lo really looking for things to sell because yes. there's not as much going on and I'm not as desperate for things to sell. So with, since this auction, you kind of have to pay up more. I just, I kind of just said I was going to pick I, a couple things. I want to say one thing. So there is, there was maybe a question of why am I spending this much? Do I need to spend this much? Do I need stuff? No, I don't need anything. So... To put it kind of as clear as I can, I am treating this time as a way to participate in an online auction that I don't normally get to do, which is sort of fun. But the second reason is I'm able to get things that I don't normally get to get, get to get, but I'm learning in the process. So that was kind of the goal and why I was bidding more on things. And I was able to do all my research ahead of the time and sort of take my time to do that, yeah. which you can't always do in the heat of an actual in-person auction. It's not as easy to do. So that's why I was able to ride that margin line up so high and and really take some some chances. But uh, anyways, had to throw that in about that. But okay. that's cool. So what I did get is this. Um, it is a pastel painting. I guess, yeah. you know, when I was looking into it, it's interesting because it's, you know, pastel is kind of that more chalky stuff. And I was like, well, is it actually a painting or is it like considered a drawing? I think it's kind of, I don't know. <laughs> I think it's considered a painting, but. A painting? Yeah. Really? That, I thought chalk was like a, like, a pencil type thing. Um, I mean, it's not there's like a, all, not there's a, a lot of different forms of chalk and, and some are, you know, more like a pencil and some are more whatever. I don't. But would you, wouldn't you define a painting as anything to do with a brush? I don't know. All I know is I've looked into this for approximately okay. 20 minutes. Oh. So um, what I what I gathered just by like searching for others for sale was that they were calling it pastel painting. Okay. But maybe somebody can kind of correct us. You know, people call things all different things. Yeah. Anyway, Ooh, it's very... It, what? I was going to say, tell your story after that about your painting you bought online. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, this one, I mean, it's old. It's... Um, oh yeah, that frame. It's probably like, you know early 1900s or something and it does have you know your painting that you sold a while back that i liked the mm -hmm. with the water and that 
um, this, I peeked back there a little bit and it has like that black color board or the whatever board. it was painted on too. So yeah. Yeah. Anyway, I've just been getting more into art recently and so this is what I was willing to get and I paid probably, um, well, yeah. So what? there was a buyer's premium at this auction so it was like 15% plus your price. So I won with a $45 bid so I paid like $51. So I don't think that that's necessarily above what I would have had to pay like on eBay or something. It's just, it's not a super large size. So, no. you know, it's probably not worth a whole lot more than that, but. We're gonna save our story towards the end. Okay. okay just so that we can divide up our talking times. <laughs> <laughs> so let me start off with the one thing that I didn't really care if I got or not. And I do have my invoice here. So you'll be surprised, I guess. Okay. She has, she doesn't know what I paid for some of these things either. So here's the Goble figurines that I was like, well, if I can get them for $10, I'll do it. But I didn't quite know what all the different animals were or what even they were. This is a cute, well, do I say cute to a rhinoceros? I sure. would, it's a pretty cute one. It's a cute For a rhinoceros. It's Goble 1984, <laughs> it's clear glass. Look at that. That is so pretty. It really is, 1984 Goble. I wasn't aware that they were really doing glassware. I've not. I mean, I might have seen this before, but I would never know it was gullible, I guess, um, know, just by looking at it. But I just realized that there's a chip and it said there was no chips. Oh, brother. Where? Right here. Hmm. On his, you know, that's kind of the back leg. We don't care as much about the back. Here, it's a smaller chip. That irritates me whenever you're doing expensive auctions and you're mislabeling things. Right, it's right here. I don't know if it's, you can pick that up on camera. It's a little chip. So we've got the rhinoceros, is that correct? Mm -hmm. Hippo, hippopotam, hippopotam, hippo. No, because it's got the horn. It's a rhino. Rhino, rhino. I thought those were dinosaurs. <laughs> no, there's some at the zoo. Oh, that's a stegosaurus, isn't it? No. A stegosaurus? What's certain, the thing? What's dinosaurs that? have a horn. What's that dinosaur that looks like a Triceratops? Yeah, that's what I was thinking of. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Here's another Goebel. Now this one's not chipped or anything. It's like of a cute little duck. That is a cute one. By the way, I did get this for $10 plus the buyer's fee. I don't know if I mentioned that. So it would have been 13% or 15%. That's, what is that price? 15? No. What am I doing? That's $11.50. $11.50 for the, and this one's a cute one too. What is, is it? Is it a, a dog? A little dog or a fox? A or? tail? Huh. Well, I don't know. So whether we guess, someone will probably think it's Wait. something else anyway. Oh, I let them go. guess. <laughs> oh yeah, we have so many great animal <laughs> animal people out. You focus. There we like go. Chew in there. Look at that doggy or foxy or whatever. If I had to pick, I'd say baby. Maybe. <laughs> we don't know. Wolf or dog? Yeah. I don't know. Okay, and this one here, I'm not sure what it is. Um, I mean, is it supposed to be like a child praying maybe? Yeah, but I mean, I guess. But I didn't know if it was like a baby Mother Mary. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I don't know if they have those. Maybe. Um, again, it's not focusing. That's beautiful. Just don't focus for me. Just don't. Doesn't like clear glass? <laughs> no. Here. There you go. Okay, so it's this child, I guess, praying. To baby Mother Mary. <laughs> I find that amusing for some reason. Okay, so the next thing I got was actually more glassware. And it's Murano. Murano glass. I paid $23 for the pair of these. Oh. Not terrible. I think that I could sell them for $24 and $29 respectively. Be I like that one. That's because it has the blue and the gold inside of it. So mm -hmm. let me show you this one first has this like banana yellow color with white. This camera is just not dealing with me today. Okay, beautiful. I like that one a lot. And they have the smooth bottoms, which uh, doesn't definitively mean it's Murano, but these look very well made, so. Uh -huh. if, it, if it doesn't have a smooth bottom, then it's probably not Murano. They say that if you take the time to smooth out the bottom and polish it, oh, right. that it means more quality, but Honestly, how much time does it really take to smooth the bottom of a glass? So, uh, and then there's this one here. 
really pretty blue with the gold inside. Now the gold inside like this is a, a big staple to Murano glass. So that's nice. And just a little reminder, Murano glass means it's from Italy in a place, from a place called Murano. That's not like a manufacturer. It's just, it's any, gla it's any glassware from that region of Italy. Uh, then where do I want to go next? Let's go on to the bake light. I almost said bakeware. <laughs> the, the bake light. So I did get the deer. Now I was not going to get this deer. That was my favorite. You know, I'm glad I got it. it. This is not, these are not common pieces. All of these things I'm showing. So this is a bake light deer and I paid $46 total for it. That includes mm -hmm. the, the fee. But I have a feeling that I can sell this for right around a hundred plus shipping. Look at that beautiful. The color is just wonderful. The red and the uh, butterscotch. That is really pretty, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And it's a pin, like I said, so you can clip that on to you. Nice. No chips or anything like that. I also did get the little boot scootin' uh, horsey. That's a good name for it. <laughs> the boot scootin' horsey. <laughs> oh, would you focus? Would ya? Would you? could ya? No, you can't. You just gotta be a, a problem. <laughs> Look at that. Oh, really pretty. So this one here is one I cannot find online at all. It's very rare. So it's gonna sell for about 300, no, I'm joking. <laughs> uh, it's gonna sell, I think, for around 115. That should be a pretty uh, good price based on things like it. And I don't think I'll have a problem with that price. So we've got that one. Now the last bake light piece that I actually was able to get was the one I was most excited about. And that's because, I don't know why actually, it's because I like it. So it's of this horseshoe, focus. It's of this horseshoe with the horse in the red. Beautiful. Look at the color. It's like a deep cherry red and it's a pen. Again, I made a run. So this sells, I hope for about $140. Hmm. I paid $74 and 75 cents. Yeah. I mean, what do you think? I, you, I think it could sell for like 140. Some of there's some of those prices were pretty high. Now, another person mentioned that Bakelite might be on like a little bit of a low point right now. Oh, could be, but uh, I'm not necessarily wanting to, it, I can hold off is what I'm trying to say, especially at these margins. And I'm gonna break down my total prices and how much I'm actually gonna walk away with after everything towards the end. Why don't you tell your story? My throat hurts. Oh, <laughs> okay, so um, I was, we just got our basement done and I was thinking, you know what, I'm really annoyed that, well, I can't go out to, you know, like antique malls or anywhere and look for art. And so, yeah. although even when you do, it's unlikely that you're going to find like the right one. So I was like, I'm just going to go ahead and purchase a couple paintings on eBay or, you know, online somewhere. So the first one I purchased didn't turn out very well. Um, so. The person had it labeled as being, I don't, what did I tell you? I thought this was on Mercari. Yeah, that one was on Mercari and I've never bought anything on there before, but anyway, he had it labeled, what did I tell you? As being in, I don't, I forgot the correct word. It was like, I could have sworn he said oil painting. What it boils down to she is that She was looking for wasn't. an oil painting, like a legit one for a pretty good price. And you found that one. Right. And you were and excited it, about yeah. it. Yeah. And it, it made it sound like it was. And there was only like two pictures, I think. So there wasn't a picture of the back. And then the two pictures, I mean, it, it looked like a painting. It said painting. So I bought it. Mm -hmm. Got it. Was not a painting. And you know what else? This guy even talked about how he thought his grandfather might have painted it. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't remember to tell you that because that was after. So With I don't know if he was, Epson. I don't know if he didn't know or he was trying to like trick me, but it's a, it is older. I mean, it's probably, if I had to guess, I'd say like possibly seventies era, maybe eighties, but it's just, it's a, it's a print of a painting. So I don't know. I paid $30 for it. It's large. It's like two feet by three feet. It's fine. I don't know. That annoys but, me. Like, why would you call it a painting? It's not. Yeah. That's like calling that a painting and it's charcoal. 
<laughs> no, <Wow>. I'm... <laughs> anyway, but then I did have another, I had a success with my second purchase that was from eBay. Have I heard this? I showed you a picture of it. This is a really big one. It's like four feet wide. Oh yeah, that like one. Two feet high. And yeah, that one is nice and it's just how it was supposed to be, so. This camera, I don't know. Why. Yeah. Anyway. So, yeah, uh, that's that's annoying. Uh, we have two more things. To sh I have two more things to show. So, I will go ahead and show you the creme de la creme. <laughs> uh, I love this one so much. Imagine if I picked it up and I immediately dropped it. Oh. Don't even imagine it. What? Oh, okay. My heart. <laughs> I thought there was a chip, but it's not. It's just the way it's done. See, see how there's like a, a bulge right here, a mm -hmm. bulge, and then look over here and it was gone. <laughs> oh yeah. But that's because it's there and it's there, yeah. but that's a divot and that's a divot. Hmm. Okay, so here we have a piece of uh, Lotus Ware, and it is actually a beautiful vase made by Knowles, Taylor, and Knowles. Did I have that backwards? No, that's right. Do you remember Taylor, Knowles, Taylor? You're thinking of Taylor Smith Taylor. Taylor Smith Taylor. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking of. But uh, it's a it's beautiful lotus flower, or it's a lotus ware face. <laughs> this is really popular in the late 1800s, so it's beautiful and it has the gold gilt. Love it, and no chips or cracks. How did you get interested in this one? Like we've never seen this before, or like had you seen it online and thought, oh, if I see one sometime, I'd like to get one? No, or? it's actually more absurd than that. Oh. So I <laughs> saw a picture of it and I was like, wow, that's interesting. And I looked at the bottom stamp, I looked it up online, I said, whoa, these aren't really, there's not many of these out there and they sell for a lot of money. Well, that's enough to be interested yeah, in. Yeah, that's, but I never, I did not know about them ahead of time, but they, they're a lot, they're in line with, oh, all that stuff that we see, like the Nippon and okay. the, and that kind of with the gilding and the flowers and the paint. So it's in line with that already. So that was kind of intriguing to me in the form of it. And the fact that everything is so pretty on, I didn't even show you. It is. Like the, the, the flowers are all there. It's hand painted, gold, love it. What country do you know is it made in, you know? Like is it, a, it's not a Japan item or it is? Oh, interesting. Um, I don't know, I, I don't know that. Yeah. But, look, the, the moon and the star. Yeah. What does that mean? Just the name Lotus Ware kind of makes me think Japan in a yeah, way. Yeah, but remember your moon and your star? Um, well, yeah. What brand was that? Well, that was Van Tines, but... Out of Japan? Um, or out of... Oh, gosh. You always, I always it was forget the Van Tines. It was exported, I thought. Right, Van Tines was not... It was it was sent to the U.S. And there was a... It was, then the store was Van Tines in the U.S. I but think it was Japan. I think But it this was. doesn't say made in Japan. Well, this would have been predating maybe the 1891 tariff. I don't know. Maybe you can look it up and flash it on the screen. Maybe I will <laughs> flash the screen. So I paid too much. No, I paid $172.50. <laughs> That's with all the fees. So this one here, I'm hoping to make over $250 on. In what? fact, what? Really? You didn't. I thought you said in today's video that it would sell for like, what did you say? Did I say like 300? Yeah, what it wasn't more than that. What did I say? I don't remember, but it wasn't more than 300. And, and what I, did you just say you were gonna make on it? Two fifty. I so, said I was gonna sell it for two fifty. Oh, I thought you said you were gonna make two fifty. No. That's why I was confused. Mm -mm. Couldn't be that good. So I might actually put it up for two fifty at auction, which sounds crazy, but I these don't come up very much and the paint is in such wonderful shape that I'm thinking that I might go ahead and put it at auction. Yeah. With a two fifty two hundred fifty dollar start price. Because I'm not sure of like how many collectors there are out there right now. And I'm willing to wait. I really don't care. Mm -hmm. You know, if I, if I end up, if it's mine, I'll keep it. Honestly, I really like it. Yeah. And before all you say, why don't you just keep it? No, that's not how this <laughs> business goes. I keep very little. Any, actually the things I do keep, uh, it's with the understanding that I will eventually sell them anyway. It's just that I'm kind of enjoying them for an interim amount of time, like my bleak and stuff like that. But eventually I will want to sell it, but that's so pretty. Anyways, 
I should live with my things more like rather than like, like I do like certain things that I really like and enjoy like that vase I could just put it somewhere in the house and look at it while it's listed. I don't know why I don't yeah Okay, so this is the last thing right here and something that I broke my rule I don't know why I did this. I really don't know. I'm Which rule? <laughs> I was not going to buy it because it was too much that's my rule. Like it, it. I think it's too, more than it's supposed to sell for. Really? Mm. I paid forty-six dollars for it. That's in, that includes all the, the stuff. Well, I've sold some Nippon vases, and it's tricky to me. Like I think there's a, there's kind of a variance even in similar pieces. It might just depend if somebody comes up, you know, that likes it more than others or i mean are there do you know if there's yeah. a lot of very similar ones out there because no. if not you might be able to that's that's a lot of it they're 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 not that prevalent yeah and this is hand painted in a pond it's older i i like it a lot but mm -hmm. i paid 46 dollars. i am going to try for 64.99 plus shipping so yeah all my prices are plus shipping nowadays mm -hmm. that's on ebay we got away from the free shipping i don't have to worry about bundling in for the worst case scenario which would be in my case california that tends to be like ridiculous prices so i did want to go over the how much i paid for everything the fees and all this stuff so it'll kind of give you an idea of what i'm going to make on this stuff which is kind of depressing if i think about it too much <laughs> so uh a grand total of all these items listed prices this is before shipping this is just the listed prices seven hundred and seventy dollars and i paid four hundred and thirty seven um uh, and then the other thing we need to consider is the fees the selling fees that would be a hundred and ten dollars and it's that much because i added in another eighty dollars for the shipping and we all know that ebay and etsy now they they do the fees on the shipping amount plus the item total. So I estimated about $80 in total shipping costs. So that would bring in that $110 fees. Then you take that out of your net, your grow, your gross selling price, which is $770. So that brings down to $660. Then you take $660 minus your how much you paid, which is I paid $437. That brings me down to $223 in profit. Then you take uh, 20% off of that number for taxes. <laughs> I'm really getting all in here. Yeah. 20%, that's $45. So 223 minus 45, that brings us in at $178 profit divided by six hours. Yes, it's going to take me six hours in total to deal with all of this stuff. I already factored in the time sourcing it, which in that case was just doing price research and bidding and everything. And the hour and a half drive to go get these items. That was there and back and the time it's going to take to list them and ship them that brings me to about thirty dollars an hour not bad i mean right. if you really break it down like that thirty dollars an hour uh after tax like that's your take home pay right there yeah so that's pretty good just because it's not the same profit margins that you end up with if we got this at like a you know rummage sale or whatever you know yeah. but these items are currently listed in my ebay shop yes ebay i am listing all new items on ebay so they are there right now and with that i will wrap up this video thanks for watching and don't forget to like comment and subscribe Bye bye